is ain't exactly. I was the first in my family to go to college. I've always wanted to restore the college promise, the uh, master plan for higher education, so that everybody could have the opportunity that I had to go to college, uh, tuition free. He's told the story to me many times about how when he was going to college he didn't know what he was going to do and where he was going to go and somehow all of these different pieces kind of fell together in an unexpected way to create something that really worked for him. I joined the Peace Corps, served two years in Tunisia, I moved to Paris. My friend said, John, you're welcome to stay but we need you in the United States. That's the belly of the beast. He comes out of the 60s, he was an activist. You know, he has a, a life of, of building and helping and making our world a better place. John founded the Labor Center four years ago. It's a remarkable accomplishment what he's done and what he's built that Labor Center into and his love for labor education. The first half of my career was focused exclusively on building up the program, going to union meetings, steward meetings, uh, recruiting students, creating courses. So he's always ready to talk to folks about the program because he really does believe in the labor movement um, as the best and most effective way to right the wrongs in our society. John would be fighting the traffic to go from one place to another to personally enroll the students in these classes and get to know the students who are in the program. It's hands-on learning. We don't teach the theory about collective bargaining, but how to bargain a contract. We don't talk about the theory of organizing. Whether it's organizing or organizational development or leadership or political action, um, a real understanding of what's required to become um, a union leader, to represent uh, working people, and I've known from day one that the Fed, the LA Fed, is the core, is the center of the labor movement in Los Angeles. And even now, the president of the LA Fed, Rusty Hicks, teaches in our program, as does Priscilla. I've met these rank and file workers who have become leaders within the union, linking their on the ground experience within an industry and the in classroom uh, experience. In fact, my letter carrier in the early 80s, Larry Brown, asked me one day, what are these brochures that I'm putting in mailboxes? Uh, we started discussing labor studies uh, after me seeing some of the brochures and literature uh, that was coming to John's house. We had a conversation. He said, I'm going to take a class, and he did. And not long after that, he became president of Branch 24 of the National Letter Carriers. I took classes myself, labor history, labor law. Is that to this day are serving me very well in my membership. The centerpiece of the New Deal in terms of this class was, was what, um, what law passed in 1935. John and Kathleen recognized how useful it would be for the student population at Trade Tech to take labor studies classes. So when these students enter the workforce, they're going to know something about unions, about collective bargaining, and about the regional labor movement. I had no idea how many of the activists and leaders in unions across the whole county were graduates and alumni of the Trade Tech Labor Center. I hope to see the Labor Center to grow and reach the next level, and I think it will under the leadership with Kathleen Yasuda and the staff we have. I sometimes don't know where he gets the energy. His years serving in the Guild, serving in FAC, serving on the Student Aid Commission, John served as president of FAC from 2009 to 2011. He had a tremendous sense of organizing. He knew exactly what the agenda was. Community colleges should get their fair share of the budget. That fees, student fees, should be zero. When I was FAC president, I aligned with students again. We turned out uh, about 10 or 15,000 uh, on the steps of the Capitol pushing back on cuts for community colleges. We had over 11,000 come to Sacramento, which later became known as the March in March. John McDowell was the driving force behind that, and it changed the way that community colleges were perceived in Sacramento from being political roadkill to being a political force. When students tell their narrative, their story, how this is gonna affect them, 
That's when legislators moved. I got to meet him when we were both appointed to the California Student Aid Commission. We became very close when we had to very much marshal all of our resources in fighting the governor's proposed cuts to um, Cal grants. And I realized if we don't have free college education, the second best thing is to provide financial aid. It was with John as my ally along with other commissioners that we um, spoke vigorously against the proposal. In the four years that I was on the Student Aid Commission, we increased the amount of funding for student aid from $1.3 billion to $2 billion. I really value his leadership and knowledge. John is really a partner in all the work that we do. He's uh, an ally in the struggles around Southern California, but also in Sacramento. John loves politics and campaigns and, and winning. I believe that you couldn't be an effective labor educator unless you were involved in your own union, and my union is the LA College Faculty Guild. Obviously, collective bargaining was important, salaries and benefits, but we understood that what's good for the colleges, what's good for the students, would be good for faculty as well. So we looked out for the institution as well as making sure our members were well paid and had good benefits. My feeling is, is that the Faculty Guild, where John has played a huge role over his lifetime, uh, is one of the most progressive and most responsible teachers unions in America. And I would say by and large, the Faculty Guild has exercised that power with more sense of responsibility because they know that the success of the district is really, truly on their heads. One of the things I love about John is that he's honest, sometimes brutally honest. He'll tell you when you're right, he'll tell you when you're wrong. John may not like me for saying this, but I think John's mellowed a little bit over the years. He can be a bit combative at times with people, and I think those are qualities that the labor movement needs, but I think everybody understands that it's coming from a place of absolute commitment. When Larry came on board as the president, things have changed dramatically. It's becoming a labor college, not just a labor program. Programs that help students get into apprenticeship programs, training re-entry folks out of prison, the connection with the labor movement is really important. I am super proud and looking back now, I see that he has done so many amazing things. It's also been great to see the way John, though he throws himself completely into this work, is able to do it in a way that involves his family. Not an easy thing to do, but he's been able to do that successfully. So I often talk with my daughters about what I was doing and how important that was to me and I hope that they learn something from me and they will be engaged in making this a better world. I can't imagine the Guild without John McDowell. He's been one of the pillars of the Faculty Guild and we are grateful to him every day. I'm surprised that we're having a conversation about John retiring because I don't actually believe it. I suspect in a couple of years we'll be back making another video talking about all the great work that John has done. He looks ready to carry on the struggle for years and years, and I think we're all happy for, for him personally, but for his, uh, what he will continue to contribute to uh, the Southern California labor movement. I'm really proud of what I was able to accomplish working with other folks. I'm proud to be a, you know, have a father of two beautiful daughters. Uh, I'm, I am the luckiest guy in the world. Much resistance from behind. Time we stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody, look what's going on.